Hi, Disney fans. I'm Lisa. And I'm Hunter. And today, we'll be celebrating the Walt Disney Company's magical 100th anniversary by taking a look behind the scenes of the incredible new short, Once Upon a Studio. This is D23, D23 Inside, Inside Disney. Disney. Featuring over 540 beloved characters from more than 85 of Disney's animated feature length and short films, Once Upon a Studio highlights heroes and villains, princes and princesses, and sidekicks and sorcerers. And it's all to honor 10 truly amazing decades of storytelling, artistry, and technological achievements. Now, this new short features both hand-drawn and CG animation, which I'm really drawn to. So let's talk to Eric Goldberg and Andrew Feliciano to learn how this all came together. Hi everyone, we're here with Eric Goldberg and Andrew Feliciano, and we're so excited to talk to them today about Once Upon a Studio. Welcome, you two. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So to begin, Eric, you have such a rich history with Disney animation. You've worked on some of my all-time favorite characters, Genie and Aladdin, Louis the Alligator and the Princess and the Frog, Phil and Hercules. What did you think when you heard of this project? It was great to think that this film was going to encompass the entire hundred years of the Disney studio. And that includes our modern characters from our CG films, as well as the classic characters in Hand Drawn. And, uh, you know, to mash them all up together was just going to be great, going to be fun. So good. <laughs> Andrew, among other things you've worked on, Ryan, The Last Dragon, Moana, Big Hero 6, some amazing films. What was it like bringing some of these more modern characters to life with classic characters that we've known for, for decades? I mean, a lot of the characters you mentioned that Eric has been a part of, those are characters I grew up with. So uh, being a part of this short where they're in the short with characters that I've helped work on at this studio is, I mean, it was a really fun experience to see Moana catch flounder. I mean, you know, incredible. where have you seen that before? Like, you yeah, haven't. Yeah. <laughs> so as heads of animation, you lead a group of animators, but you yourselves, did you get to work on any fun moments or characters themselves in this? The short answer is yes. <laughs> yes, we did. I did some Mickey scenes. I did kind of Mickey and Walt. Uh, I did um, lots of Goofy <laughs> handling the camera and the ladder, which we, I did together with him. Yeah, yeah, we actually got to work on those scenes wow. together. So in that particular case, the ladder and the camera were animated in CG, and Goofy uh, was animated by Eric and Hand Drawn. So we got to work together. I got to work on a scene with Eric Goldberg. Oh, that's <laughs> unbelievable. I yeah. Got I got to work on a scene with Andrew Feliciano, so there. Mm. Yeah, Andrew, Andrew Plus did a lot, you know, it was really fun. And some of that stuff, because it works as well as it does, you don't realize how complicated it is, yeah. you know. In that sequence, Goofy is turning the camera upside down and turning it around and go, no, let's see, where's that timer button? <laughs> okay, wait, that was Andrew good. Andrew had to animate that. <laughs> Fortunately, all your attention's on Goofy, so you don't really have to pay too much attention to the camera as long as it looks okay. Wow, such a collaborative process. Yeah, That's absolutely. Yeah. And that took place, uh, that collaboration was throughout the short. There were so many different character moments and interactions where hand-drawn characters were interacting with CG elements in the case of uh, Stromboli. Mm -hmm. Stromboli is a hand-drawn character. He's actually interacting with a CG vending machine Oh, wow. uh, and Burt Klein was the animator on that particular, the moment of that scene. So he animated Stromboli and the vending machine. Yeah, he could do both. One thing I want to call attention to is, is the magic that the lighters brought to it. You know, we're not sculpting the hand-drawn characters, but we're lighting them as if they're in the situation. When Lewis comes out of the frame, he is casting a shadow on top of Nick. Right. You know? <laughs> and, right. and, that attention to detail sure. is the kind of thing that went into every scene in this film. Well, and then you talk about like uh, Lewis in that scene when Lewis, you have that little uh, accent on the horn mm -hmm. at the end, right? Yeah. And if you look at Nick's tie, Nick's tie reacts to the wind that's coming oh. out of the horn, which was uh, Mitch Council's uh, tech anim artist, and he added that in to get that level of interaction, that integration. Incredible. Well, yeah, what an amazing job. It all feels so natural, all these characters mm -hmm. in the same environment. Disney fans, they love the details. What are some of your favorite little hidden details in the short? 
there's a scene with uh, Olaf and the genie, okay? Okay. And um, Olaf is at the animation desk actually humming and trying to draw the genie. Genie comes out <laughs> of the desk, you know, and, and says his line. The effects animation when the genie comes out is 110% accurate to the original wow. effects animation in Aladdin. It really looks beautiful. It's done by James Mansfield and James just did a great job on it. It sounds like such a labor of love and I think what shines through is your passion every step of the way. Can you describe what it was like seeing this start to come together and then finally seeing it complete? It was really a kick to see all these characters not just drawn the right way or, or moving the right way, but, but being the right way, being who they are as well as, you know, what they look like. You know, they all have a different movement style, which is what animators do, is try and make each character unique through their movement. All of these characters have an enormous longevity. Yes. You know, even Oswald the Lucky Rabbit makes an appearance in this film and they're all just as popular as they always were. <laughs> That's the thing that the hundred years of Disney in this film actually says is, oh look, it's Mickey and Minnie. Oh look, it's Olaf. You know, and, and everybody's kind of mashed up together, but in a way that says, yes, all these characters are what Disney is for the past hundred years and hopefully for a hundred more. <laughs> well, I, I tear up every time, not just tear up, I'm like, from the moment Mickey comes out, I'm like, uh-oh, here we go, waterworks. <laughs> um, yeah. Eric, Andrew, thank you so much for your time and congrats on an amazing, amazing short. Thank you so much, on behalf of all of us. <laughs> thank you very much. Hunter, what a true delight it was to speak with Eric and Andrew. I totally agree. I could have talked to them for hours. It was so much fun. Mm. True gems of human beings. And you know what? At the recent Destination D23 event at Walt Disney World, we had a chance to catch up with the writer-directors of Once Upon a Studio, Dan Abraham and Trent Corey. Take a look. We're here with Dan Abraham and Trent Corey, writers and directors of Once Upon a Studio. How's it going? It's going fantastic. Yeah, what a great weekend. Now, I had the chance to watch the short film. I, I loved it. I, it's one of the best things I've ever seen, and I'm not saying that hyperbolically. I could have watched this thing 10 times. It was so, so good. Thank you. Thank um, you. Can you tell us a little bit about what audiences can expect to see in Once Upon a Studio? A few years back, Trent and I had directed a short called Once Upon a Snowman, a little Olaf short that was on Disney+. Plus, and we had such a good time working together that we were trying to figure out a way to do that again. And we realized quite quickly that we're going to be working at the studio during the 100 year anniversary oh, yeah. and how cool that is yeah, and how, how special we, that is. Yeah. The whole idea of this short is that it was meant to be a love letter to Disney animation, mm -hmm. a love letter to the medium, to everyone that's worked in the building over the last 100 years, mm -hmm. uh, standing on the shoulders of greatness making this short. And the whole studio got behind this short and they said we had people come to us and say, we want to work on this because this character meant something special to me because this was the first character I ever worked on. I used to watch this movie with my grandma and it brings back memories. So yeah. it was really a celebration within the studio as well. Absolutely. It truly feels that way. I remember you saying there were some uh, of the original animators. There was also a very special cameo right off the start. Yeah, I can, I'm gonna let Dan talk about that cameo, but I can talk about the special animators. There were a lot of, we had this giant wish list when we pitched <laughs> it to Jennifer Lee and, and we had this wish list of, wouldn't it be cool if we could bring back these voice actors and these guest animators? So we had 40 plus of the original voice actors come back, reprise the roles. We met Jody Benson. I got to meet the Little Mermaid. <laughs> tell, tell us how you feel, Dan. I got to meet the Little Mermaid. I got to meet Timon. I got to meet Quasimodo. I got to, like, Josh Gad, it was it was amazing. And on top of that, on that wish list was bring back animators from the past. Wow. Animators that had worked on these characters, especially during the 90s. Mm -hmm. So we had Eric Goldberg, our head of 2D animation, who animated the genie in 1992 in Aladdin, come back as our head of animation and animate the genie and, and characters like the Mad Hatter and Goofy. And we had uh, James Baxter come and work for us. We had animators come out of retirement to come work for us. And we had Mark Henn animate up to 30 characters in our short, yeah. the great Mark Henn. And uh, you, you mentioned a, a, an amazing cameo. At, yeah. at the very beginning of our film, 
from day one when we were storyboarding and we said from the start, like, Bernie Mattinson and a young intern walk out of the studio together. Perfect. And Bernie, if people don't know, has worked at animation, Disney animation, for just shy of 70 years. He wow. is a legend. He was at Disney longer than Walt Disney was alive. He started in 1953. His first film was Lady and the Tramp. He worked all the way up through Strange World. We knew we needed him to be in our film and, and to pay homage to him. We did lose him this past February, but it is our joy that he is part of our film at the beginning. And he got to see the short, which was a very special yeah, moment. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yes. You know, when I thought, when you said cameos at the beginning, I thought you meant Dan and I. <laughs> That's <laughs> also we, very special. We had special. the honor of holding the door for the great Bernie oh, Madison, really. which was really yes. an honor. Absolutely. Yes. So many Easter eggs. What, what a lovely homage. What a lovely piece of work. Thank you both so much for being here and for making this. It's oh, wonderful. Thanks for having us, Hunter. Thank yeah. you. D23 members got to see a special early screening of Once Upon a Studio at Destination D23, where the film received a standing ovation. After two years of working on this project together, yep. uh, nine months without people knowing about it within the studio, right? and then coming to D23 to show the best fans, Disney fans in the world. It was emotional showing everyone today at D23. Like, they got every joke. And that's what that was our goal. If your favorite movie is Snow White, or if it's Strange World, anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. uh, or if it's gonna be Wish or if it's gonna be Wish. And, and those little obscure shorts and stuff that we tried to get in as many characters as we possibly could. Um, that was just, it was just so much fun to put that together. <laughs> yeah. This short is so fantastic. I can't wait for everyone to experience it. Me too. I keep watching it again and again, and every time I, I see something new, what a way to celebrate Disney 100. And if you wanna continue the celebration, why not bring the festivities home by becoming a D23 Gold member? You'll receive this year's D23 Gold Member Collector Set featuring the Mickey Mouse Leader of the Club Milestone Statue, plus your choice of a special membership card design from the worlds of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars. And of course, the quarterly Disney 23 publication. It's all available to new and renewing D23 Gold Members. To find out more about the set and the benefits of being a D23 Gold Member, visit joind23.com. Remember, to get your fix of all the latest magic from around the worlds of Disney, including amazing behind-the-scenes stories from celebrities and creatives, check out the D23 Inside Disney podcast, available at d23.com slash Inside Disney, and all your finer streaming platforms, as seen at the bottom of your screen. Thanks so much for watching, and don't miss Once Upon a Studio, now streaming on Disney+. Plus. From all of us here at D23, we'll see, see you, you real soon. soon.